So the brand new Microsoft Windows 11 running on a Raspberry Pi. Yep, it's real. Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hello everybody, welcome back. You are with Wi-Fi Sheep right here on YouTube with me, Tom. Thank you for joining me once again for another tech video. This is part two of our look at Windows 11 running on a Raspberry Pi. If you are not up to speed with what on earth we're talking about, do check out part one. It'll be in a box somewhere on the screen up there. Uh, but basically, yeah, it's true. You can run the brand new Windows 11 on a Raspberry Pi and because it's a beta build, it doesn't actually cost anything. I have to stress the project is not officially endorsed by Microsoft. However, I don't believe it's actually pirated as such because it's a developer build and it would amaze me if Microsoft don't do some sort of formal Windows 11 for the Raspberry Pi. Before we go any further, a quick reminder that this video is sponsored by our partners at PCBGoGo.com. If you are looking for professional turnkey manufacturing and PCB production services, then look no further than PCBGoGo.com. Details and links are in the description to this video. So just a recap from last time, we are using the Raspberry Pi 400. This is the all-in-one keyboard included Raspberry Pi 4 model. The advantage of using the 400 is at the time of recording, it's technically the fastest Raspberry Pi available. The stock model, which is what this is, comes with four gigabytes of RAM. That's plenty for what we need. And I've been loading Windows onto a 64 gig micro SD card. I think the minimum it can run is a 16 gig card, but because this is a full fat Windows system capable of running x86 PC applications, it has a tendency to want to expand. So 64 gig is probably plentiful for what we need. So let's just pop that in the machine. Make sure we actually get the card in the front way around. I've got a uh, mini HDMI to standard HDMI adapter for video. That's going to a capture card. I've got the power supply, the official Raspberry Pi 4 power supply, USB-C, and I have uh, my mouse plugged in on one of the two USB uh, three ports. There's two USB 3 and one USB uh, 2 port on this model. We also have um, Ethernet networking and that's important because unfortunately the Wi-Fi which the 400 does have on board doesn't work currently with Windows 11. It's not a huge problem because networking does work so you can go online and we will be going online a little bit later. Right so let's power up one thing to note is that Windows 11 does take a little bit of time to boot. So the boot uh, screen is a little bit different to what you're used to if you're normally using the Linux-based Raspberry Pi OS, formerly Raspbian. Uh, Windows does its own thing on the Pi. Okay, we've jump cut because that took a little while. We are now getting there. There we go. So yeah, that takes a few minutes to get going. So it's a kind of typical Windows 10 almost boot up. We click and it should, there we are. Wi-Fi sheet, that's my account. And let's put password in. So yeah, I've been playing around with a few bits since you last saw it, so hence why my desktop's got um, a few more bits on it and also this has done a couple of updates from the Microsoft servers. Uh, I have logged in and registered uh, to use this version of Windows. This version of Windows isn't it doesn't have a, a license attached to it so it still complains about that but I did uh, sign into my Microsoft account is what I should say and I used my Xbox account which worked fine for uh, signing in uh, via this version of Windows although Interestingly, my Microsoft account thinks this is Windows 10 still. So, yeah, I don't know what's going on there, but that's interesting. It worked nonetheless. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is how to access the boot partition. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with Raspberry Pis, all Raspberry Pis, with the exception of the Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller, need a boot file 
on a fat format side of the SD card. So when you have an SD card with an OS on it, it's split into two sides. You have the operating system side and you have what's called the fat boot side. That's a side that contains effectively sort of, uh, it's like a BIOS for the Raspberry Pi. And when you boot the Raspberry Pi, it has to initialize a few things. And one of the things it goes looking for is a file called config.txt. And this tells the Broadcom chip, which is the ARM processor used in most Raspberry Pis, how to configure itself to load. Now, Windows seemed to be a bit different because I couldn't find a partition, um, but it must have a boot config.txt file because otherwise this simply wouldn't work. And I have found out where it is, but in typical kind of Windows Microsoft style, it's not easily accessible like it is on other operating systems. So I kind of knew there was a hidden partition on the SD card, but you can never find it. So if we go to uh, the file manager, so it comes back as SD card on, let's go to this PC. Okay, so it only shows up the C drive as the SD card. It's initialized nearly the whole, um, 65, 64 gigabytes rather, uh, 58.7 gigabytes available. Um, so, but it's no uh, boot partition. What I found you have to do is you have to go back to the Windows on Raspberry Pi website, that's worproject.ml, and under downloads, you need to download the boot partition mount utility. Uh, this is something you can actually download and run here on Windows 11 on the Pi. So if we go C drive and program, is it program files or under x86? I'm trying to think now. No, that's 64 bits, so it's under x86. And there we are. Uh, so once you've installed it, it's here, which is WOR boot monitor. And we'll just run that, so we'll say yes. Now this program is a little bit buggy, but it does work. Just give that a moment. There we go. Okay, and you select the SD card. And you can click to view contents. And there it brings up under Q Drive, which you can't actually open through the Windows Explorer. It shows it up, but you don't have permissions to actually run it through the uh, File Manager Explorer. But you can load up here. So. There's the config file, it's actually config.txt. If I right click that and I ask it to open with, we'll just say notepad. There we go. You can actually force open the uh, config.txt file. And this is the base setup for the HDMI. Now, one problem wasn't working properly, which I've been trying to get to work was sound via HDMI. The sound didn't appear to be working. And I tried to add additional instructions such as HDMI drive settings and force edit for audio. And nothing seems to be working when it comes to sound. Everything else, including if I wanted to disable the overscan or enable it, everything else worked fine. But I just wasn't getting anywhere with the HDMI groupings. So that was unfortunate. And I've still not got sound working through HDMI. If you want to make any changes, you could, and you could save the file, restart Windows, and that is how you access the uh, hidden boot partition, which is all here. And those of you used to using Raspberry or even RaspBerry on the Pi will recognize these file names. It's virtually identical setup. And we'll just unmount when we're done. So basically, this is free download tool. You can do this here on your Pi unit, or you can actually do it over on a Windows 10 x86 machine uh, by taking the SD card over and it will mount the partition. Uh, it might not be giving me permissions because I'm actually running and mounting the SD card that we're trying to access, which might be why it's not allowing me to load Q because I get this error. Possibly because I've just unmounted it, but uh, normally it will say um, I don't have permission, uh, admin permissions. Uh, to access the file. But the links to this will be in the description to this video. So I was talking about the lack of sound or getting sound to work. A huge thank you in the comments from the last video to Andy Morrow, who said that the sound does work on the analog out of a Raspberry Pi 4. Just grab my, 
got a Pi 4 board here. I have Raspberry Pi 4s lying around the place now. It's ridiculous. But basically, you've got this analog AV jack. It looks like a headphone port, but it's AV jack. Apparently, the audio for Windows 11 is coming out of this port. But Andy did actually suggest that we could actually try an external USB sound device or sound card, which I thought was an absolutely fantastic idea. So I know I had some cards. Um, I call them cards, they're little USB dongles, and I have dug them out in the box, I haven't used them in years, but here we are. These are very, very cheap, low-cost, uh, mass-produced USB devices. They work Mac, Windows, and Linux. They're actually bought originally for the Raspberry Pis, uh, mainly because they've got, as well as headphone, they've actually got analog in, which is useful. So I was going to use uh, this one, and it did work okay. The only problem is if you plug it in, it's so large it actually stops things going in the other socket which is a problem so it does work but it's a problem I had to dig around because I knew I had another one and I actually have a very similar if not slightly cheaper card device um, or dongle that actually has a separate USB leads that's much better for plugging in so we'll see if Windows is actually going to like this. Let's. It may need a minute to load the drivers. Let's go to settings and sound. And there we are, speakers. You'll notice because I haven't activated Windows, I've still got some stuff that doesn't work properly. But um, yeah, it actually works fine. let me change the volume it will here now I was thinking um, how am I going to be able to patch the audio through so you can hear it uh, could do all sorts of clever things with plugging analog lead in and getting a, a sound mixer set up and all that kind of stuff so you can actually hear the sound and to be honest with you I just thought just to prove it does actually work we'll do something really crude <laughs> and simple so I'm just going to plug in a pair of uh, headphones and let's just put the headphone up. Yeah, so before this decides to crash again, let's just see if you can hear that. Yeah, so there is sound. Hopefully you've heard that. There is sound actually working. Right, let's have a look at some software then uh, I've been playing with. So first thing I thought, and this is different to what we did last time where we loaded LibreOffice, uh, we tried KiCad, which did crash unfortunately, but it, it worked well enough. Uh, I thought, what else are you gonna likely to want to use? And I've actually been trying to load some emulators. So first emulator is BBC Micro emulator, or the latest version of BBM, which actually seems to run relatively okay. Uh, it does help if you Take off some of the sort of things like DirectX and uh, just try and get it. It runs better when you try and stop it using graphics accelerators because the Pi uh, doesn't have the accelerator support. Um, but what we can do is we can try running a game. So let's load zero. And let's try revs. So I haven't got a shift break to be able to do this, so we'll go. XEC boot. There have been quite a few videos about revs of late on YouTube, so it seems fitting for us to uh, try this one out. I don't remember so many controls. Okay, thank you. Can we load, please? Okay, <laughs> we're getting there. So I'll just say practice for the minute. You can probably hear the sound also works. Let's put it into gear. There we go. Now, bearing in mind this wasn't the fastest thing on the BBC Micro, it's a little clunky. Because you have to do the gears manually on, on revs, but it's a little clunky. But it's quite playable. Oh, I've just slammed it in reverse. Hang on. 
come up. There we go, first gear. So this is an x86 PC compiled emulator. It's not meant to be running natively on ARM at all. And yeah, it's there's probably a little bit of a speed lag, but it's not that bad. It's not that noticeable. Oh, I've totally messed that up. <laughs> but yeah, it actually works really well, which is great. I'll show you a DOS box. This is the uh, x86 emulator. You've seen me use this on various systems. So this is DOSBox running as an x86 compiled application on top of Windows 11 ARM, and it seems to run okay. Can we, oh, can I remember how to mount something here? It's uh, mount, mount C, C, Slash, I think it's C drive. All oh, right, there we go. I just had an. There we go. Absolute brain freeze. Then I couldn't remember. Okay, so that mounts a C drive. So let's uh, list the C drive, and we should be able to go CD Windows Win, and there you go. <laughs> we can actually load, or hopefully we should be able to load Windows 3.1. There we go, we are loading. Now, the only thing I have noticed is there's this graphical glitch. And I don't know what that is about. Let's get a file manager. Let's try the older Heli Sim. Sierra Heli Sim. Oh, there you go. And actually, you can hear some sound. Now, those of you who remember, we actually had this running on a BBC Micro. This particular version as well ran natively the PC DOS build. Um, obviously, we've got nice, I think it's either EGA or VGA graphics here. So we go to demo mode. Anyway, you can hear the terrible. PC sound just in the background, and we should be able to go to a tracking shot. I think that sound would drive you nuts in the end, but um, yeah, that's kind of cool. Now, I was asked about the RiscOS emulator. Can you run RiscOS on this? Uh, let me show you uh, RiscOS Direct for Windows or RPC EMU, and I found that the uh, interpreter version, I think, is the one that runs a little bit better. Now, I say runs a little bit better. Um, yeah, this is kind of where you won't be using this as an emulation machine for running other complete systems, especially new generation 32 bit stuff. Um, so, you see, it, it runs. But you can already see it takes its absolute sweet time to load. Now, you've got to remember, on the Raspberry Pi, even the Raspberry Pi Zero, this operating system boots within a second. It's stupidly fast. It's the fastest operating system on the Pi. Here, running it in an emulation mode in a PC environment on top of a Windows build on top of the Pi, so it's not running natively. It's running through two layers of emulation. Um, yeah, it's slow. RPCMU was always a little bit slow because it used an old emulation technology so it was never as fast as the Pi even when it running at full speed but um, yeah that's <laughs> well we do get there though we do get there you give it give it a minute There you go. Told you it was worth to wait. <laughs> oh dear, host FS. Yeah, so it's set up to kind of look and feel like Riskrest Direct. Uh, it even has its own emulator. It has the DOSBox 
If you're looking for an emulator in an emulator on top of an emulated layer, I would not recommend doing that. It will work. It will work, but... <laughs> You're just going to grind to a total halt, I think. No, oh, this is terrible. Come on. Come on, you're going to do something for me. Hey, there we go. <laughs> oh, no. No, whatever you... Oh, look how slow that's running. No, okay, yeah. Yeah, don't recommend. Uh, it does run, and for some stuff it will probably be okay. But, uh, yeah. It's interesting, we'll shut that down. So it was interesting, but no. Nah. Uh, let's say exit. I did try x -Roll, which is the Tandy Color Computer and Dragon. Um, no, to tell a light, it's the Dragon 32 emulator. And I think it would work. But I don't have a ROM. XRAW doesn't ship with any of the ROMs required to actually run. And I wasn't able to very easily find the ROMs I needed to make this emulator work. So unfortunately, although I think it would actually run quite nicely, um, that's as far as I get. But I believe it would probably work. Okay, one thing I want to try, which, well, I'll show you what happens. So this is Vice emulator, which is for the entire family of Commodore machines. Now, bearing in mind that the BBC Micro one I showed you sort of worked, the Acorn Electron worked, Risk OS was slow, but it did work, uh, ZX Spectrum Fuse emulator worked, Vice, on the other hand, uh, it's slow, it's very slow. It's, I mean, look at the lag. Yeah, uh, that's not particularly usable. You could probably get it to set up to work better. Uh, take the CRT filtering off, for example. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you know anything about the Commodore 64, you'll know that's not right. <laughs> So that's unfortunate. It does work, but it's it's too slow. It's running too slow to be usable, unfortunately, which is a shame. So we'll say, yeah, we'll come out of ice. And it's no real different to any of the others. I don't think it's trying to pet. I think the pet's just as bad, if I remember. Yeah, it's it's a little bit better, but it's it's still got a keyboard lag, unfortunately. So yeah, that's unfortunate. So we'll say yeah. So there we have it, Windows 11 running on the Raspberry Pi 4 or 400. I am still really impressed. Of course, not everything works. The Windows itself is a, not an optimized version. It's a beta build, so there's bugs, there's things that don't work. And of course, some of the software I showed you could work better if it was recompiled to run natively on ARM and not x86. However, the fact that any of this is even possible, and now we do have some kind of web version of Microsoft Office working on the system, it is really, really impressive. The sound scenario, well, we got the sound sorted out, and of course the lack of Wi-Fi is, you can sort it out, it hopefully will get sorted. You can either cable in or use an external dongle for now. I'm sure there will be some kind of driver to use the onboard Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi at some point. Um, it's well worth a go if you want to have a look at the system. It's not difficult to set up, it just takes time because of having to compile the ROM. And of course, because it's all beta, things are always subject to change. And I'm sure further down the line from when this video is published, things will change. However, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. If you haven't done already, do like and subscribe to us here 
on Wi-Fi Sheep. You can follow us on Twitter as well. It's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter for all the latest news and happenings from the channel. And as always, I will see you real soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.